Hey, what's up fam? Good morning. Happy Thursday. Hope you had a good FOMC day. Let's get into it. So let's just recap. Big trend has been lost. We've lost the big trend. We've had a sharp movement down. Generally what happens after a sharp movement up, we've talked about this over the years, you get a big dump. What happens after a big dump? You get a big bounce and then we get the true reaction. Okay. Then we get, you know, it might not be this. It might be, it might, you know, it might double bottom. It might just be a triangle. It might end up push, pushing back up. So that's how I'm looking at it. Same thing. Massive run, sharp move down. There's going to be a bounce. We knew there was going to be a bounce. And if we didn't break the GP down here, which I'll just quickly touch on again that we talked about in the last video, then we would go back up into the zone. And that's the zone that we're at right now. Now from here, we will get true direction of what the market wants to do, right? Is that going to be that sharp move now that we're looking at that 423 zone? Okay, that's not off the table until we break through here. Okay, this is a possibility. Another possibility is just we're gonna chop around in here, right? We're just gonna chop around in here. It's gonna take a long time to play out. Can we do the V shape? It's going to be extremely difficult in my opinion but you got to keep that open mind. You know, if it was a percentage wise, you know, it's down. It's a very low percentage that that's going to happen, but it could absolutely FOMC. Like I'm looking at what was so great about FOMC yesterday that, you know, the rust is the strongest. It's up at the one, two, seven, two. Okay. Strongest move in here is the rust. Um, if you look at what happened, the dollar was pushing and now the dollar is dumping. Okay. So that was obviously a fake out. What happened with GC? What happened with gold was pushing. And it dropped fake out what happened with btc okay btc dumped and now pushing back up it's just a mess it's going to take time it's going to take time for us to really decipher what's happening here and that time is letting the charts develop and looking at this move exactly what we were thinking you come down here you hold the gp where you're going to go don't break this you're going to go back up into here they made it choppy it was a little bit choppy yesterday because buzz saw action Just making sure my mic is on because it started getting some messages. Yeah, it looks like it's good. We got something buzzsaw action right in the FOMC time, right when we broke through here. We had algos all morning yesterday up until FOMC, which was, where was it yesterday? Now I've lost where we were yesterday. That's last night. This is the morning. Yes, it was right in here. This entire time just riding up. As soon as we got broke up our resistance, got choppy, Pulled back, buzzsaw, whatever. Now we get the true clear direction today. If you notice in here, you come off of this extension move. We hit the one to one extension. We hit the back test of this range. And that's where we got a reversal candlestick, which would be a evening car, evening star candlestick on the hourly chart. Confirmed. Okay. Next candlestick, bearish engulfing, pushing it down. Makes sense. Makes sense for this to happen as we hit our target. Market, we know, tends to give us lots of opportunities to revisit a zone. We traded there. We have opportunity that we could come back in here today again. Or, you know, maybe trade a little bit sideways, you know, get there a little, little bit later. Maybe it happens in the futures market. Let's watch the reaction back at this zone because also it's lining up with the lower trend line, the upper trend line that's pushing us down. Okay. So that's going to be the focus right now. A revisit of the zone. Do we break it? If we break it, we get up over this trend line, then that game plan is changed. Completely changed. It's going to take a long time if we're going to revisit down there. Unless it's a big up, we break, boom, sell ogles, turn on. Do not lose sight of the market. Although names are looking really good and there's a lot of great charts that are set up nicely that we've been talking about. I mean, the charts have looked great, but the market has looked crap. Stick with your charts, stick with the trades, stick with the plays as long as they're working. The only plays I have are still bullish plays. So I'm still like, hey, I'm playing bull because these charts look bull. And here, we'll see what happens. And if we have to react, we've got to get protective. We'll get protective. Uh, one to one has been hit. We potentially could close right here in the GP, right? If you look at where we are, where the real body is, I mean, there's time how much, there's an hour and a half till these candlesticks close. I mean, we look at that on the line chart, it was still closed in the GP. So let's not get too bullish. Let's see what happens in the zone. It's gonna be very, important to see the reaction. Now, if nothing happens, 
that's it. Just let it be. Let it chill. Tra trade your charts. If we start to see the sell, I'll go turn it on, which would mean we're going to see it. It's not going to be, hey, you know, they will start to push it down. We'd be prepared for that. They all look the same. NQ, let's go to a smaller time frame in here, right? Came back down, held, pushed back up, one to one extension, one to one extension, hang in on the GP. Algos are all doing the same thing. Don't forget, this is more like, are we going to stall in here? right are we going to stall that's what we're looking for that's our true resistance all the way up in here this trend line is higher that would take us like to the 1272 zone right which would bring us into that 1539 range so this has more room if it's going to do anything like what the rust has done right the rust has come up to the 1272 it paused right there you can see as soon as it got there it paused i mean the real body would have closed there or the real body opened there let me just see what that looks like again Okay, no, we had a spinning top and then we had a wick off of that zone and then we pushed down. But these trends are all in an uptrend right now, right? These shorter term trends are all in an uptrend. All we're doing right now is looking for four hour higher lows. That's it, right? And the Dow, let's look at the Dow. What did the Dow do? One to one, that's where the pause, that's where the evening star starts, that's where the GP is. I mean, it's all extremely technical, which is great because that's all you want. You want when the charts start to act technically, um, not when they're, well, what's happening here? You can't make sense of it. This makes sense. We get up in the zone, we pause. Now let's see what here, let's see what happens in here. This could all be just to get back up into this range and then push it back down, or we're going to be looking for that. Oh, let's fix that up. Get that next leg up which would mean we have a reversal in, and I don't anticipate new all the buy, but, right, come back down, which is kind of what we're doing right now, back test that zone, and then look for a next leg up, back into this range, and then I imagine choppiness out of there. So, uh, congratulations to the swing positions that are out there, because everything looks green-ish. I mean, AMC is the best open, and that was coming off of a great spot on the chart. Yeah, I mean, everything's like basically up 1%. FSR is up 2%. Anyways, that's what I'm watching right now. Um, keep looking over your shoulder. It's not a time to be like, oh, we're okay. No, look over your shoulder. 80%. Be aware of what's happening in the market. Let's get into the tickers. Did I request that? It looks like there's a whole bunch of them. Good morning, everybody. First one's going to be Palantir. So let's go look at Palantir in here. So yesterday... If we look at this in here, it's basically a GP hold, right? A little GP hold, a mini GP hold, very small time frame pattern. And if we're gonna push up right now, right? If we're gonna push up right now, we're gonna be looking up at that resistance of 28.11, okay? That's the mother bar. Although we have a nice tweezer bottom, we're back in this 28.11, that's the zone I'm gonna be watching. We get back up over 28.11, we trade in this range, you know, that's gonna be fine. It's gonna be fine. We don't break through this range, that's the pressure day then I anticipate we chop in here and we have opportunity to go to that lower level that ideally, not ideally, that I was thinking we were gonna do. We're still trading within this range. You can see this, this is our zone. Potential fake out, breakout, drop, pop. Now it's gonna be factored in with the market. 20 and 11 is what I'd be focusing on right now. Let's zoom in here, check out this four hour chart. That upper trend line it's still kind of in play, you know, it's not an overthrow, but look at the back test in here, that lower trend line that held. 2811 is what I'd really be focused on today. You know, if we could break 2811, that's showing us a little bit more strength than, than a fake out would be. A fake out would have been, hey, we would come back up, lower high, and then drop down a little bit quicker. So that's what I'd be watching right now. Of course, yesterday, and I mean, the Russell and everything is looking pretty good. Yesterday, it was one of the stronger names that was out there, right? It was one of the stronger names, essentially both like, Double top came back and then popped. No, that was, yeah, that was losing my bearings in here. 15 minute chart, 22, 1045. All right, it was a double top and then we just traded sideways in the end of the day after hours went a little bit up. So it was looking pretty good. It was looking strong. If we look at ARC, let's go check out ARC in here. Like ARC is still in a very nice bullish pattern that we think it can have that opportunity to go to the upside, okay? I mean, that's what we're projecting, but still, like, if you just look at it right now, we're in a triangle. We're in a triangle in here and waiting, waiting for that triangle to break. If Arc's triangle does break bullish, then we're going to see Palantir, Zoom, Teladoc, 
um, hey, I just checked out this video this guy posted on YouTube, all the DD on what Kathy is doing, which is pretty good. Um, from let me just show you guys the video here from ticker symbol you check out this guy in here ticker symbol you 93,000 subs really breaks down what Kathy's doing Kathy would just pick these new winners I was drinking some wine last night watching the video it's pretty interesting I like it so a little bit of DD on what Kathy's doing um, so, I mean, this, if this breaks, Palantir is going to break. And going back to Palantir, I want to see that 2811 break today. Okay. And then we could just chop around here, which would be pretty bullish, which would mean we're just hanging out and getting ready for the next leg up. Next target would be 3090, 3101 into that range. Strong move. Then we start thinking to that back to this potential new established upper trend line we got two touches in here i just don't have it drawn backwards 3378 let's move on talk about apps apps is looking really good it's the play that i originally was talking about we got the back test we got the follow through yesterday was looking strong everything is looking strong about it right now pre-market a little bit higher in here it closed at the 618 right it closed right there right on that zone but we have opportunity it looks like we're going to try and break that today Break yesterday's high continuation, next level 75, 77. That's looking really good. It is the play that I originally thought was going to happen. Unfortunately, like the market gave me a little bit of caution, but it's looking really good right now, right? If we're looking at new potential resistance, this is a very minor resistance in here. Okay. That wick, but the zone is more important, right? Because it comes from this, right? So is it going to like... We're looking for a particular level. I wouldn't say there's a particular level. I would look at this, these two candlesticks in here, right? Strong move as we get up into it. Let's check out, do we have any divergences on the chart? No divergence on the four hour. How's the hourly looking? It's still looking fine. I mean, there would be a very minor divergence in there. Strong base of you know, accumulation, and now we're getting the breakout. You could look back at this in a few weeks and it's trading, you know, 80s, 90s, it could continue to go. So you want to keep this on top chart uh, perspective, just like net, right? Just opportunity that this is going to continue to run from here. Massive period of consolidation. We should be able to see a bigger run. Doesn't mean it's going to be every day. Like yesterday was a great day for this name. It was one of the stronger names out there. You know, we can have a consolidation day, but I'm going to be looking up on this name. I'm going to be looking up continuous and keeping it up on top charts and look for those new entries new opportunities this is looking good we're getting into these candlesticks we know those are the problem candlesticks so let's see what the reaction in here as long as we hold the hourly uptrend you can see that there right now losing the hourly ADMA, hourly higher low pattern that's looking good then we you know we continue to look for this chart to continue to walk up it is looking really strong let me just double check that level there 72.39, 72.39, yeah, and then 75 to 77. That's what I'll be watching on apps. Snap, obviously this big bullish action coming into Snap. I think this is going to have opportunity to go for a blue sky run. So we got to have it, like I put it to the top watch now. Because, I mean, this long period, so gapped, right? Held its gains, right? Held its gains. Came back down in here, filled that gap, right? Um, you know, we don't have a non-traded in range. So we based up in here, Kumo Cloud Touch, now strong move yesterday. What we want to see today is for that confirmation is the increase in volume today, right? The increase in volume, the breakout candlestick. And then we anticipate it's going to just ride the daily 80 May and it's going to have a big blue sky run. That's what we want to see. So we want to see that follow through today, not getting stuffed. Of course, everything we talk about, you got to relate to, hey, if the market is going to be fine or if the market's not going to be fine. We're looking up at all-time high resistance, 80.85. I think we touched it here in the pre-market. No, we didn't. No, 80.85. Where did we go here? 79.78. So that's it. We're looking at 80.85, and then we're looking for a potential blue sky run. We want to see the bullish kicker today, right? The the higher open or a gap up open is it a gap up open 7925 no higher open and then push 
and then hold that daily ADMA with all that bullish activity. Very long, very long four week, five week period. I mean, since July 23 of a base that's really set up nicely for a long run here. Roku. From the chess wizard, Patel. Um, let's see Roku here. What are we trading at? 335. Ooh, nice higher open, right? So we're going to be getting up over that lower high that we have there, 328. This was a good entry zone, right? Now we're going to get up into these candlesticks, right? This is where the resistance was, where we got shot down. So that's the zone you're going to have to watch for. Now let's zoom in a little bit because that's such a big range. So watch a couple of these. Okay, that would be a little bit too much for today. That'd be too much for today. So we're looking up at 342. Now, if you come off over here from that pivot down, so you don't get caught, right? 0.382, we're over it. We're right there. You still have the risk that you're gonna come up over here and then revisit, right? Another leg down, okay? So you would be looking at, no, that could be it. That could be over right now. Watch that 342 and then the 340, 349, 351. Short-term patterns are looking good. That's looking like a nice reversal in here, right? Strong downtrend, reversing it back up. Just watch that level. 343 and then 349, 351. Path. So I think this is a Kathy name too, right? She's been loading up on this one. I think so. Um, nice looking bottoming pattern shaping up in here now it doesn't mean we're not going to be able to break to a new low break to a new low not get too much follow through it could be that case it's an inside bar for now what are we opening up at we're opening up also as an inside bar so really it's trading in the same day for three same range for three days new lows not getting much follow through lots of volume lots of exiting lots of entering positioning in here bottom of the trend now bottom all-time lows though so you've got no support so you always have to be cautious what happens if we do lose that 5104 so right now it's a bottom fishing play 5104 that's the stop you want to get up over to daily 80 may you want to break what's today taste thursday so that's tuesday you want to break tuesday's high because that's an inside bar right now 5360 no 5420 5420 is where really what you want to break you're just trying to do a bottom fish in here right that's all it is if you break that zone, then you're looking at 56, 53. Bottoming process could take time. It could take multi days. We come up, it doesn't get followed through, it comes back down, chops around in here, very long period, right? It just trades in there and then eventually a big move comes out of it. Up or down. I think this is one of the names she's been adding, by the way. As a new position. If I was paying attention enough. Facebook, let's check it out. What are we doing in here? You know, this is not a great higher open. The NASDAQ is up 0 0.49. I mean, it's kind of relative to what it's doing. Four hour ADMA, you can see it's almost a wick from it. We were trading at 349 here in the pre-market. So overall, we like the opportunity that's come. We know we need to bounce and that's the play. That's the play we're looking for um, to get to bounce even if we just come back bounce into the 352 range, right? Back into this trend line, Kumo Cloud, whatever it is. It's an extended move to the downside, got too volatile, went vertical, right? All the way down to 20s. Now we wanna see a trend change. So the momentum isn't really there, right? The momentum isn't really there, but we could get that momentum changed if we could get a trend change in here. The zone, everything makes good, final flush, climax, and then a move up, you'd like to see that. If we come down here and revisit the zone and break to a new low, we should get no fall through because it's going to be a lot of divergences and it's too far extended. So opportunity here, we want to get the trend change. We want to break 349. We want to break that upper trend line. I love this opportunity. I'm just going to stick with it. This one should be able to pay the bills. Um, even if your first entry is not perfect and it gets a little bit choppy, just got to stick with the chart. Could take a little bit, could take a few days, could look like a bear flag, right? And then eventually get a move out. We're going to have to factor in how the market trades as well. If we do push down a little bit lower, watch 339. That's the zone I'd be watching. 330, I'd be very surprised. That would be very shocking, but then that would mean the bounce is going to be even bigger and the reward's going to be even bigger. So that's why we want to take a starter 
entry just in the event just the momentum doesn't get going once the momentum going we got to go in with more and we'll see the momentum what it looks like right it'll show us the volume the rhythm right we'll see that as of right now there's nothing happening right there's nothing happening we want to get that trend change so really the focus now is to break the pre-market high 349 but yeah this is the play like this this is all set up nicely and you know they got some news yesterday after hours and you see the reaction to that news it's just the charts too beat up maybe if the chart was trading at its highs it would have got a bearish reaction to that news but as of right now we just want to see this if this level breaks it's going to have bullish divergence shouldn't get follow through and then the same play now if it's not going to happen in the next three four days then you have to roll out we'll have to look at it again here we're going to move this out we're going to move the contracts out unless you're playing it through shares zoom all right zoom yeah zoom let's check what's happening here with zoom what well, is zone is being defended maybe it's not coming to the gp Maybe it's not coming to the GP. Heavy defense, bottom fishing play, right? Arc has potential to go. If it starts going, that's the bottom fish. It's just an inside bar for now. A little bit of a higher open. Yes, it is an inside bar. Still trading under the daily EDMA. We're gonna wanna obviously get back up over this. So now to get up over it, we're gonna be looking up at that 284, 285. Reverse that trend. Absolutely, that could be the bottom and we don't need to hit that GP. If it does, that'd be like, should be a pretty safe entry to get into there. Did we hit this one-to-one -one extension in here? Yeah, we did. Okay. Yeah, so it's still just the same play, right? It's, what was that name we were just talking about? A bottoming process could take some time. You come back up, you revisit the zone, you still chop around in here. It could take weeks, right? Or it could go, absolutely. And let's watch what happens with ARC. But right now, that's a bottom fish, 273 is lost, I would look at 264 and into the GP. TLRY or CGC, let's go to CGC. Because this is all looking pretty interesting. And if you see like the, the space, right? Cannabis space, you see what's happening here with Truel. You know, I mean, Canadian names don't get love, but you know, when they run, they run, they run big. Support, support, when was this? This was May, when was this? This was October. What do we got coming up? We got October, what happened? That was November. So that October we dropped in and November we ran. So I mean, the seasonality is kind of wishy-washy. So listen, it's oversold. It's been weekly beat up, weekly 28, weekly setting up a reversal candlestick potentially get a hammer. We look back up to the weekly 80 May 1648. This could be a really nice opportunity, right? This could be a really nice opportunity. Volume is not very exciting as of yet. Break today's high, which we are. So it looks like continuation to start getting back up over the daily 80 May. That weekly is due for a reversal. It's weekly oversold. We went vertically down. We haven't even back tested the weekly 80 May since the 24s. So back test is overdue. I definitely like it from an oversold opportunity in here. Now it's not a climax. It's not a you know pure entry off of a, a true signal. It's just trying to play this bottom in here, right? That double bottom. That's the support. That's the major support. And that's the thing. If you have like the p proper position sizing, I mean, traders love buying highs and they don't love buying lows. But if your position sizing is okay and it's your style, that's an entry right there. And now we want to get up over to daily 80 May, which looks like we have opportunity to do today. And can we get a close and start to see a little bit of, if this is going to be a run in MJ, then we're going to, you know, get a pop, higher low, and then continue to go. So there's going to be a lot of signals, but as of right now, that's the first signal for double bottom, break up over to daily 80 May, and then continue to go. And then we will look into this all. Dash. Okay, so Dash. In monthlies. It's still looking really good, right? This candlestick here gives you a little bit of pause for concern. Doji, 
Now we start to consolidate since a little bit of a gap down at 214.47, but it's a traded in gap, right? Why did we gap up? We gapped up for something. This looks like it wants to continue to run, to be honest with you. Daily ADMA is holding really good. Very low consolidation volume, except that. Like, what happened in there? But anyways, uh, daily ADMA, as long as it continues to hold, right? So if you lose that low, you get concerned. If you lose 215, you look for a back test of this trend line. Weekly. It's not really extended, right? 63s. You know, it's fine. Everything's looking good. If you lose this low, you might just get a gap fill and then pivot right back up. So it's really about closing under the daily ADMA, which it hasn't done. It hasn't done since August 23rd. That's looking really good. Of course, you're up into the major resistance zone. Bear volume is low which is what you want to see. You like to see a little bit better bull volume start to come in now though, right? And then get that push up, that big candlestick that pushes it right back up. Amazon. Okay, so GP perfectly. So that's looking really good, right? Hit our zone and now potential to break out of that zone. It's still trading within this, so you're going to be watching up today at that 3.42 level, 3.420. You can see the Kumo cloud in here. It's kind of just guiding it. Couldn't break up over it. Now we fell under it. So watch the Kumo cloud in here, right? That's fine. You get back up into that range. Don't let it cause too much confusion for you. It's really going to line up with, you know, can we close up over the daily ADMA? But you like the fact that we came back to the GP because now you can think about this is this is going to have opportunity in here for that pivot, which would take us right to our resistance. So right in this zone in here. So this could be pretty interesting. Now, of course, you're using that as your support, but you do have this lower trend line in here that could come in and act as a nice support as well. This could be a really good play. We're gonna have to need, we're gonna need the market to cooperate. I mean, the NAS started to drop a little bit in here. We're gonna have that concern until it's not a concern. So keep that in mind for Amazon. AMC, I mean AMC it looks like perfect, perfect zone. What are we trading at? 41.40. I mean this looks, you know, this looks really good in here now. That lower trend line. I have two in there, but that could be a little bit better that way in here. Like that, right? GP came down. You got the reaction that you wanted, which is setting up a reversal. Some shorter term time frames showed better reversal signals, right? Uh, we had the wedge, I can't remember where the wedge was then. We came back, revisited GP, double bottom, pushed out of it. Nice, we're trading up higher now. We're gonna have, we're gonna have a lot of resistance in here, right? All this is gonna, you know, it's not gonna be smooth unless the volume really starts to change and the volume's not looking so great. So, you know, you just look for the potential of a lower high. From here to there, let's watch that golden pocket, which would bring us up to 44, 53. 0.32, right? 0.5 is gonna bring us up into our resistance, 43, 36. So right now we're just watching the pre-market, pre-market high in the 43, 36. GP. I do think we'll get up into this GP zone and we will revisit this upper trend line again. You just want to get that confirmation to see better volume coming in. The rust looks like it, want, it could cooperate too. Now if the rust doesn't and it does, you know, 
Like it goes the other way. I mean, AMC is going to come right back down to that lower trend line. Etsy, double inside bar. Yeah, double inside bar. This was a break of a triangle, so I would assume that we're going to be pushing up higher. Okay, so I'd be ready to say, hey, like, look for dips to be bought. Triangle forming on hourly. Yeah, with the double inside bar. Let me see what that looks like with non-extended hours because it's just dashing, right? That's basically what you're looking at right now on that hourly chart. I know this is a 30 minute chart, but it allows you to look at it a little bit better. Now this might not be, right? You could come down still and it'll still be a triangle, right? You would like for it to hold in here. That would be better. But overall, I mean, the chart's looking pretty good. This went through a lengthy period of consolidation. We had a breakout of the trend line. We stalled up at our resistance in here. So we know we have our all-time high resistance in that range. Yeah, watch that break at the 30 minute. Watch the volume. The volume's been pretty light, right? This consolidation volume's pretty light. We had the lower open due to the market, you know? Market shows health, it gets straight back up in that zone and we're re revisiting those all time highs. OHM. You know, I was wondering why I wasn't seeing a noob during the day anymore. And it's because he's trading like cryptos now, he's trading all night cryptos. Okay, so it's breaking through our resistance. So we had a stall, a reversal. That's a lot of action happening in here, right? Stalled it, bulls came in, battle in here, lower wick, could have been a hanging man candlestick. Nope, push us up higher, continuously pushing up. It's a strong trend right now, but the divergences are building up. So when the divergences are building up and the volume is starting to get a bat into a battle, you get a little bit concerned, right? Still got eight hour bearish divergence, volume starting to, it's gone vertical. It's obviously, you know, due for a clear, uh, you know, consolidation phase, but you do have your higher lows building up in here. Okay, so you do have opportunity to walk up those stops. I mean, they're continuously being walked up right now, which this one would be 576.742. Why has it got so many digits? Um, yeah, breaking our resistance in here, little divergence is starting to build up. They're not huge, right? Like this could quickly be, you know, four hour, four hours fine. This would have been tough. There was a lot of volume on that day, but it was a reversal, tweezer bottom reversal, broke to new high, higher low continuation. Right now, like really focus on that ADMA on that four hour chart. Hourly, that would be super tight if you used the hourly, the four hours a little bit better. Is the bat playing out? Let's check it out. I don't think it would have broken yet. Well, if it did, it did, yeah. It actually did. That would mean we've lost it in here. Yeah. Like this is not something I would be like so, I mean, it's a harmonic pattern. I would not be so worried about it because it's still the same thing we're looking for, this zone, 
the reaction at the zone. So far, the reaction in the zone is what you know is expected, which would then fall in line to that. But it doesn't mean it's going to be game over. Let's see the reaction out of here, right? If we you know start to go green to red, then we get a little bit worried. But yeah, I mean that would say it's already broken. FDX. Okay, FDX was in a bottoming process. Ooh. Oh, earnings. Okay, yeah. So this could be a really good opportunity now. Right? So it got smashed on earnings. Now that could bring... Oh, yeah, this is going to be a good opportunity now. We're going to look for the gap fill on FedEx. Right? We're going to be looking for the gap fill on FedEx. What do we add here on the daily? 18. Yeah, this is a really nice setup. Yeah, this is a really nice setup. So gap down on earnings, push down. We're going to look for a level to base out and then eventually get the slow move to the gap fill. Definitely you don't want to buy down the first day. Let's see the hourly now here with extended hours on. Basing out, right? So we could potentially look for the low, maybe a tweezer bottom, maybe a double bottom. Lower high on the hourly, come back, make a new low bullish divergence, not get follow through, and then slowly start to look for that gap fill back to the upside. Has have they done this before? On a big move down. Well, here and then later on, but it didn't give a huge gap. This one gave a little gap, and then it got the fill. This one gap took a while, but it came back and got the fill. Here. Took, took a stronger move down and then it got the fill. So that's what we're going to be looking for. The fill that's going to come eventually. But you don't want to be too early with it, right? You look for some signs. You look for some short-term signs, right? Reversals, wedges, inverse head and shoulders, volume, bullish reversal hammers. All right, let's move on and talk about Maxar. Ooh, okay, we haven't looked at this in a while. And this is like a triangle at the bottom of the range. So nice upper trend line. Double top in there. So we've got a double top in here. 33. Double bottom in here. And it looks like now we have the opportunity. Is this a descending triangle? It's almost a descending triangle, right? Which means this pattern could go for a lengthier period of time into October. Shorter term triangle off of here. Not really, no. <laughs> it just looks like you have a opportunity Yeah, it's almost a, almost a triple bottom right now. You would love to say, hey, like, can you afford your stop down into that range if you already got in? That was a great, like, that lower wick was a great to place a stop over there. Still setting up lower highs. We want to get that lower high trend changed. It's just doing nothing but lower highs. Is there a trend line in here that needs to be broken as well? Yes, that needs to be broken as well. drawn perfectly but you get it so watch out for that and if we come down and revisit the zone you have that opportunity for that bottom fish again this looks like a major descending triangle right so you'd be looking for the break in either direction nothing looks too imminent because there's nothing really happening here in the volume right we could just continue to chop around even break this trend line it just sets up a lower high hits the kumo cloud tra trades around in this range you One thirty-eight fifty-one. That's a strong pre-market. Right back into the golden pocket. Yeah. 
Yeah, this is a tricky one. I mean, the wedge is going to throw throw things a little bit off that you're going to be concerned that you're still going to back test it and then reject it. It got a reaction, right? But was this more due to the market? And now it's just revisiting that zone. It's still a very, like, really good chart, right? We're making higher lows along the way. Everything's looking good in that sense. You're just getting concerned is is the trend going to end now that's our higher low compared to that low it's a lower low right but the market caused it so you know the market could throw you off sometimes um you're going to be right back up your resistance in here it's a higher open gap up open so is there any news or is it just because the futures were up you're looking back up at your resistance 139 all the way to 140 there's a gap to fill and then 146 is a gap to fill all the way up to 147. That's a nice recovery. It actually broke in the pre-market. So it's looking pretty strong. I don't know if there's news or anything, but it's looking pretty strong. You're just going to have to deal with the GP. Now, you know, market likes to give you some opportunities, right? A second chance. This could be, you know, one of those scenarios. So be prepared for it. Don't be so bullish because that higher open, you know you still have to deal with this range. When you're dealing with it, if it's not showing any red flags and it's doing this, hourly higher low pattern, and that's it, it's looking good. Then you look up into that 147. AMD doesn't want to do it, eh? Doesn't want to come back down to the 96, 97. It got so close. Um, 99, it hit 99. Yeah, it hit 99. Which was a back test of here. Like that could be it, right? That could be it. Essentially, that's a back test of there. Now let's see here. Let's go look at this daily chart, right? Morningstar confirmed daily ADMA break one oh six ninety, one oh six ninety. That's the focus now to break that zone. Breaks that zone. We're going to that upper trend line. We're looking up at one ten. Don't break that zone. Chop around in the Kumo cloud for a bit. Tesla. So. This is a tough one to read right now in terms of what's happening. Do we have a triangle in here now on that four hour chart? Maybe. We'll have to see if we don't break through that high, essentially like that. And then we could see something like this form, right? We'd have to see a little bit more development. We're right under the golden pocket. Got to have eyes on it because if it's going to go, it's going to, it should be a pretty good move. But you know, Tesla Q, they're, they're trying to short this right now, right off of the zone, right? That's the major resistance. It does feel like we're weakening the zone, right? So we have to be ready. If this gets going today, tomorrow, whenever it's gonna be, is that a triangle in there? If it is, we'll see that one more rejection and there will be another opportunity, if it's a triangle. If not, we're just gonna go. DNMR. Decent bear volume on strong open yesterday, but also got 21 price target. Bull or bear play? This is still a bear flag in here. Okay. And with that rejection, it tells you there's still a lot of sellers in here. Um, can we make a new low and then get a, a uh, you know, a wedge? I prefer something that looked like that, right? Come back down, hit that lower trend line, and then you get a wedge play. That'd be something a little bit better, right? Whenever you see uh, anything that looks like this, which is almost a bearish more bozo candlestick, but because we have that little wick, it's not. But we gapped and we immediately saw sell pressure. That's really a good sign that we're going to see lower prices because there's still a lot of selling. And you would look at this and say, that's still a bear flag. 
okay? They had a deal with somebody, Chevron, yesterday, right? Um, but when I see that, I think bear flag. And then we have opportunity. And then it could be a wedge. What are we trading at here in the pre-market? Inside bar likely today, okay? If we break that low, bear flag, you start thinking that we're gonna at least revisit this low and potentially we're gonna get a wedge and come all the way back down to this trend line. I don't see any bull play here. It just doesn't look like a, a bull play right now until it breaks that upper trend line, which means buying back in higher or just waiting until it's higher. Pen, did you hold the back test? It did not. And it lost the GP. So this is a choppy chart, right? Rejected the anchored VWAP. Couldn't hold this back test in here. So we have our low. Now off of this move, we lost the GP. Looking for a reversal. We got a reversal yesterday, right? So now you can be thinking a little bit higher. We got to break this as high and think about a little bit higher. 76, a little bit of resistance at 77. <clears throat> it's a confusing chart, right? It's a confusing chart. Such a strong run. Rejected anchor VWAP, gave it all back. It could be pinned in here for a very long period of time, right? Just trade within this range. So when you're trading within the range, you gotta you gotta take your gains when they're there. Once those trends are lost, like this trend in here, once it was lost, you see base lost, take it off. So now bulls trying to reverse it. Is that an inverse head and shoulders? Not really. What did it hit down in here? Coming off of the low. GP, okay, that was the entry signal down in there. That was the GP. Volume not really convincing. It's not really convincing. If you're gonna be playing this bull right now, just really, really focus on that hourly higher low, right? You got an hourly higher low here now. If you could hold the hourly 80, man, great. You got re resistance in here, so to get through this, you're gonna need to see some bigger, better, bigger bull volume. Otherwise, look for the four hour to curl back down, find a higher low, and then maybe you can then develop an inverse head and shoulders, and that would be your signal, right? We come back down into somewhere in there. Neckline would be wherever we top out at. We draw that trend line there, and you get your neckline there. BA, I mean BA got a huge reaction yesterday, right? Obviously got a huge reaction. That's looking really good. That should tell us that the bottom should be in. Now, is it gonna get follow through today? It's a little bit of a higher open. Yeah, this could be, you know, bullish kicker today, increase in volume. I think I saw, were they all moving? Yeah, what about cruises? I mean, the space could get going, right? That is looking like the bottom of a triangle now. So, yesterday's high. First thing, we should be able to see more upside here, 223, get into that upper trend line, and potentially that's that's the bottom. That's a really good risk to reward now, to have your stop at the bottom of this trend line. Lucid dreams. All right, let's see here. Ooh, bearish and golfing candlestick yesterday. A little bit of a higher open today, inside bar very likely. So big run, extension. Nice run in there. What did we hit? Let's double check it. I mean, yeah, we hit everything there. Two to one extension. You got your resistance up in the zone two. Bearish and Gulf candlestick inside bar likely today. You lose that lows. Start thinking about the daily ADMA back test. Make a new high, bearish divergence, shouldn't get fall through, but these are crazy movers. These names are a little bit crazy movers. Resistance did not break, 29 to 29.81. American Airlines. Okay, that looks like a triangle break at the bottom of a trend, a reversal signal. Tweezer top yesterday, so that's the focus. Got to break that today, 23.73. This looks like a reversal. Right, obviously big run down, bottoming process, and now opportunity to run out of this range. Stick with it, right? You wanna see some better momentum starting to come in because you see 
it's constantly red green red green red green you want to see the break the breakthrough candlestick now right the volume then you start thinking 21 48 22 16. it's hard to trust because each move looks good or oh, no right it's, it's a battle but you want to see that big volume now coming in push it ba could help the entire space ba is looking pretty good 21 48 to 22 16 that's where i would target disney yeah you don't want to lose sight of disney right because the bounce opportunity after that news i mean it already started to bounce but now you're just looking up at trading in this range likely for four or five days okay so higher open today break that high of yesterday is going to be the focus 175.29 watch the back test of the daily 80 may this trend line is lost i mean that news really pushed it down but i'm still going to keep it in here and see what kind of reaction we get afterwards so we'll come up do we back this hold and then there's gonna be opportunity to go again Hood was looking really good yesterday and a little bit of a lower open today. So bullish kicker yesterday, bullish more bozo. Volume is not huge. Now, because we're getting the lower open, you know what to anticipate. People are gonna be selling early because they were just looking for the gap up open. They were looking for a gap up into the resistance. So there's gonna be some selling pressure early. So watch for that hourly higher low. Where could, it, where could we find it? Well, let's look at the four hour because that is going to be a better idea let's come off of the slow look for the four hour higher low let's watch there you go four hour 80 may 0.3 to 45 26 because of the lower open you're generally going to get that sell pressure early that's where it's going to come and then you see if that dip is bought airbnb it doesn't mean it's going to get there but because of that lower open as long as we're going to hold the lower open oh yeah we got five minutes then I would anticipate, you know, that's what most people do, right? Gappers, they don't get it. Oh, I gotta get out of this position. Psychology, that's what they do. Airbnb, that'll be the last one. Still looking good, right? It's grinding, it's just grinding up higher. It closed right on that trend line, 171. We're looking up at 177 and 178. Doji could be an inside bar today, right? Focus on breaking a steady's high. If it's just an inside bar, don't get chopped up in there. 171, 78 breaks. We could start thinking getting up into that zone, 177, 178. Let's have a great day, everybody. Peace. I'll see you in the room. Later.